All right, so before we do any kind of a deployment, the first thing you want to make sure is you can still run your things correctly locally. You can build it correctly, and then you can pass all the tests you wrote. All right, so I am running this program right here. This is uh, uh, in my local environment, and it looks like server is up and running. I go back and then go local host 8080, and it looks like this one is running. I'm going to go to the home page. All right, so this one looks good. All right, so that's the first step. And then second step, I'm going to stop this one. I'm I'm trying to build it, make sure I can generate the build correctly. So I'm going to go to my uh, project folder right here. I'll do Maven package. So this is going to trigger all the build stages, including running all the tests. So if some of the tests have failed, you're not going to generate the jar file correctly. All right. so. If this one is success, I go to the target folder. All right, so there is this uh, jar file here, and then you can run Java dash jar CS four AD. Um, oh, sorry, let me run this again. All right, so then this is going to trigger the same application again, just in terminal, but this time I'm running that with just one executable file, right? So I go here, I refresh, and it still works. All right, so this is good to go. So get to this point, this little file here is the ideal software artifact you want to uh, execute. And also you know that as long as the server has a Java installed, JDK installed, I can just run this jar file there. Okay, so let's just work on that. So the whole deployment, the purpose is to move this jar file from my local environment to the target environment, and then we run it from there. Now, first step is we need to have this target environment. Okay, so I already told you we go and they use AWS. All right, so you can use other environments uh, as well, um, but I would highly recommend you use AWS because this is the leading cloud uh, provider, most popular one. And then a lot of companies are using it. So if you have this kind of experience and this skill, I think that's gonna be very helpful. And then uh, some of you are asking about other ones, what, what are the options? Uh, Heroku or others. Uh, Heroku is, is another one you can you can use, uh, but again, I wouldn't recommend it because the Heroku make a lot of things much simpler, and um, you don't you don't got a chance to try all of these things manually, internally, and you don't got a chance to understand some of these details. That's why I wouldn't recommend it. I recommend you still have a, a real server and then try to set up all those things by yourself. Yeah, Google Cloud is same. Yeah, but then the Google Cloud is not as popular as AWS. Um, AWS is the most popular one. And the second one is the Microsoft Azure. And then I don't know the server, maybe Google Cloud, but the Google Cloud is not popular. So um, if you know, because a lot of companies are using AWS, if you use that one, you have that on a resume. I just thought that's a good plus. All right, Jamie. So um, again, trust me, this is the most popular one. And then they, they also are giving the most services. All right, so you will you will probably have more opportunities of working with AWS. Besides, they also have some AWS certi certificate. I think that's also kind of a, uh, helpful. Um, so um, just my recommendation. All right. So uh, speaking of the account, okay, every team need to have one account, and then um, you need to sign up. Uh, hopefully, all every team got this sign up. Okay, when you sign up, you need a credit card. Uh, it won't charge you because this one has some of the free tiers you can use. So I need to make sure that you follow that free tier to run your server, which is enough for you to run a server for complete one year. Okay, if you use that free tier, you can do that for one year um, without worrying about the cost. All right, but then if you open the second server, they're going to charge you. All right, so... Um, some of you mentioned that you need two servers. You can try to deploy the two servers together in the same server, or what you can do, you can create two accounts and then every account you can do one like free tier server. All right, so anyway, just pay attention to that cost, okay? Um, you don't want, so, so if you go to the AWS, uh, they got a lot of services right now. I think all the services, I think they got over hundred different services already. And then they all charge you by the usage. If you don't use, if you don't, don't open that, they're not gonna charge you, but then if you open, then they will. All right, so just be careful, especially when you are using your teammates account, okay? 
and uh, you know you don't want to log in and go there and open a bunch of servers and try all the different things okay uh, take a look at oh what is this um, you know the let me let me show you an example one of the expensive ones if you go with um, uh, some of the machine not machine learning uh, Mm, what's in their big data, the EMR. Yeah, this one. This is their uh, service that you can launch the Hadoop server uh, fleet. And then, you know, some of you might learn in Hadoop or maybe um, what is the other framework that's more popular right now? A memory one, I can't remember. Um, uh, anyway, so I, I forgot the name. But then you go here to open a server fleet with a bunch of servers, and that's going to cost people like a, I said ten twenty dollars per hour. And then if you leave that open there, next day they will find a big charge on their credit card. Okay, so just don't do that. Then very cautious about using uh, other accounts. Just only stick with the server. Okay. So uh, anyway, back to this AWS. Maybe I will just give you some kind of introduction in the beginning today. Um, maybe we can push the deployment next time. So they, um, uh, they, they give a lot of services. The, the, the whole motivation of the AWS is to make um, the development of web application much easier than before. And then any kind of a services, a hardware or resource you may need, they will try to provide you from here. So you don't need to worry about how to do that, right? And then, um, so um, that's why they provide so many services. The key, the major service you want to use is definitely the EC2. All right, this is called uh, Elastic uh, Computing, uh, Cloud Computing. All right, so that's called EC2. All right, so you click on this one here, and then that's uh, when you get this portal. You got a lot of things going on, and all you need to do is click on the first one called Instances. And then they got some of the new UI here, and it's, it's different from before, but uh, it's kind of the same idea. And then here list all the servers you may have. So be careful. You should only have one server here. If you got a, the second one, very likely they're gonna charge you. Um, but then if your service stop like this, that means it's not gonna charge you. But then if you got a running, make sure you only have one running instance. If you got a second one, I'm sure they're gonna charge you, depending on the type of server you're using, all right? So a couple of things, I don't know how many of you have done AWS. Uh, I, I really want to highlight one thing, uh, is, which is region right here, okay? When you click on the top right corner right here, the, the region, and um, it has all different regions available for you to use. The region means uh, different locations of their data centers. So basically there's a huge server rooms. All right, so that's, uh, they start with uh, US East, I see in Virginia, that's always the biggest one. And then they got uh, uh, Northern California. Uh, that one is a little slightly more expensive because uh, you know it's, uh, it's, it's more expensive, the land is more expensive, right? So build a, a data center where in Virginia, you got plenty of space. And then Oregon and or, uh, Ohio will be even cheaper because the land is cheaper, right? So, but then you can choose this four different regions in the US and then obviously you want to choose the one that's closer to you, right? So maybe you want to choose Northern California, right? They also provide you the international regions, all right? You got a lot of choice in Europe and then they only had Ireland um, early on, but now they got so many other options. In Asia also they're adding more and more. And then they're also adding things in, um, in South America, um, that media is, these are all the new regions they are adding. Okay, definitely getting very, very popular right now. Um, the reason they give you all these options, there are two reasons. Number one, uh, if you're launching your service internationally, okay, you obviously you wanna provide the services with a better performance and then your server should be in the same region. Otherwise people will experience a longer latency, a bigger latency to get the request done. And then number two, by having your server running in multiple regions, you could increase the availability of a server. Just like the example I showed earlier, if one guy mess up the deployment and then they shut down the North Virginia region, then at least you still have other regions available. All those regions are physically disconnected. 
Okay, so they're totally different server room, different connection, different internet. So you don't need to worry about, sometime in the summer, there's a, a lot of storms, hurricanes going on. Uh, the, the East Coast will be affected more. And then you don't need to worry about that. Is you have some other options and backups. So that's why they provide more uh, region the data center for you to use. The reason I'm talking about this one is that when you log in, I think it will default go to here. All right. And then, but the EC2, as you can see, they're not merging all the instances together. They, they, they are separating them from different regions. So you go to North Virginia, I'm not, I don't have any service. If you go to Northern California, and I got this uh, six service uh, up and running. Okay, so be careful about that one because if you log in with uh, Northern California, you don't see anything. And then you saw there is no, nobody created any server, but the truth is they probably create something in some other regions. And then when you create a second one, then we got a charge. All right, so that's uh, the really important part about the region um, because that whole UI, I don't think that makes perfect sense, but um, uh, I, I want to point it out that make sure you stick with one region. Okay, so if you want to get a fastest performance, probably Northern California. However, I don't think you can you can difference um, you know see the difference between Northern California and the East Coast. It, you know it should be pretty much all very fast. All right, so that's one thing uh, you should uh, know. All right, let me uh, see if there are any questions here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the, that type of a server is free, okay? It's that, uh, there, it, I'll, I'll show you. There's one specific server that's gonna be for free. Yeah, so yeah, Google, I know there are a lot of programs that give you this uh, kind of credit. Even AWS, you, you can also apply some kind of education fund that they give you some $200 thing uh, for you to use. And definitely, you know, explore those. Yeah, but again, I, the only reason I don't recommend Google is just because their their cloud is not popular at all. Okay, not many companies are using that, so you probably can benefit more with the AWS. Yeah, another thing about the charging is that AWS in general, and Amazon, like the whole company in general, is very customer centric as I explained. So if something wrong happens, you can always contact them. Most likely they can just refund the money to you if you explain it, all right? Okay, so once you decide a region, okay, let's, let's we can start to try to launch a server. Now that's the first thing you wanna do. You wanna create your target environment. Okay, so let me go through that really quickly. And then you click on this button here called launch instance, all right? And then the first step you need to choose is the type of uh, operating system you're gonna use. We're running the server most of the time you're using Linux. All right, so you have to start to learn Linux. And at least there's nothing to learn, just be familiar with some of the command, okay? Or you can choose the Windows Server. Remember it's a Windows Server, not the personal Windows 7 or 8 or 10. Okay, so it's a Windows Server version, specifically for you to run server programs. It's so primarily there's two types of systems, but yeah, I think in general, you should use Linux, uh, not a Windows server, unless you're running the .NET uh, server application, that's the only choice. Other than that, I think Linux will be much better. And then Linux is open source and operating system, then there are different kinds of distributions. Uh, you might heard about this Red Hat, it's a very famous commercial version. There are Ubuntu, it's a free version right here. And then there are also uh, Amazon Linux version, right? So it, they're all based on that's the Linux core open source project. They just build different kind of um, you know features, different packaging system, all of those, right? In general, I would recommend Amazon Linux since they're provided by Amazon, so they probably run very well in their call uh, machines. So, but for us, it really doesn't matter too much unless your uh, framework requires something really special. But for most of the typical firmware you're using, right? Java, Node.js, it works for all of this. Okay, so if you have a certain specific preference, go for it. Otherwise, just stay with Amazon. Okay, I'm gonna choose the first one, the default. Okay, pick that one. And then <clears throat> this step is really important. That's where you got the free tier. As you can see, this specific type of server called a T2 micro, it's a called a free tier eligible. As I mentioned, the first 12 months, you can use this one for 750 hours per month. 
it just gave you the whole month. Okay, don't worry about the 30 days, 31 days. Um, it just, it's all, all for free for the whole year. So it won't go wrong. So if you choose this server, and then you should be fine. Okay, remember, this is the only server you need to choose. Unless you want to try something else, you don't need it. I don't think your 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 app in the beginning need a lot of a bigger server. The difference between different servers are number of CPUs that you have, number of um, the amount of memory you have, and then this doesn't seem to be a lot, but it's en it's enough for you to run your uh, first web application, right? So because there won't be too much traffic going on, all right. And then later on, you can increase the the server type and then to get more, all right. So if you one day you really hate when you're a teammate, and then you can always just log in here to this uh, M4 16x large with 64 CPU, 256 gigabytes of memory, 25 gigabytes of bandwidth of internet. Just start this server without telling anyone, or you can start a bunch of those. I think every this server probably will cost you ten dollar per hour. You can look at the pricing shit. Um, you know. If you really hate your teammate, and then probably that's something easy you can do. All right, uh, but you know, be, be careful about the the bidding and charting. Uh, this is the one to use. All right, so I'm gonna choose this server type. I go to next. This part is about network. Okay, so I am not a network guy. Uh, the good things about using uh, cloud is that you don't need to worry too much because they got a pretty good configuration for everything. I think no matter how experienced you are, I think their configuration should be more reasonable than things we can do uh, by our own. Okay, so I would leave this one at the default configuration. Don't even touch it. Sometimes you, you change some of this, it's going to affect other things. And then if you're not sure what you're changing, then it's hard to uh, uh, hard to say. And then this is where you attach the storage, basically your hard drive. This is the provided by the EBS. That's a service I mentioned that had issues a few years ago. And then you can specify the gigabytes, eight gigabytes is enough because you're running a Linux. Okay, so it's a pretty small, not a Windows, no graphical UI. So you don't need too much space, eight gigabytes is fine. And then the cool part is they all use SSD right now. So it should be pretty fast. All right, and next one, you add a tag. And then next one, you specify a security group. And don't worry about this one right now, we'll talk more about it. And finally, click on review and launch. Here you look at everything. Just make sure that you're doing the T2 micro, okay? It's a free tier. And that's the only thing you wanna uh, make sure. And other than that, the rest thing you can always change later on. Finally, you click on the button to launch the server. Now this step, very important. First time you run it, or actually every time, it will ask you to choose the key pair, right? So for those of you who have learned security, cybersecurity, this is the typical public and private key system authentication. Uh, you, you need to create a, a private key first. And then the way to create it is you go here to say that I want to create a new key pair and I want to say this uh, CS4800 ball, give a name, and then you make sure you download the key pair. Okay, download this one. All right, so that is your private key. So make sure you save this key. Okay, if you lost this key, there's nothing you can do about it. All right, so that's the key file. And you might want to share this key file also with your teammates because they can also then log into your machine. So once you got this one here, okay, then you can launch the, the instances. Click on launch. And then you send that request to Amazon and then they're gonna basically work on getting you that server. Right now, this one is gonna take like pretty quickly. Like this is the new one we're just launching. I think within a minute, you can have your server, server up and running. All right, so let's just wait a little bit. But that that is the process guys, okay? Um, choose the right type, right configuration, Make sure you save your uh, private key. And then now as you can see, it's running. It's, done. it's really fast. It takes about 15 seconds, all right? Um, that's why people all use the cloud computing because you know, think about in the old days when we try to run the website, when we try to run the web application, uh, we need to order a machine, a physical machine, a server machine to use at our server. You order that, you wait for the machine to be uh, delivered and then you need to configure your internet. You need to buy some, some network uh, devices, not the simple routers. And then you have to install the operating system by yourself. And then you do all the configuration, make sure it's very secure. And finally, you can start to run your application. So normally when that happens, it's probably one month already passed. 
But now you want to run something, it takes 15 seconds to get the server up and ready. And then you can start to build it right away. And then they even gave you a, maybe a more um, you know, reliable and safer configuration. Then you do it on your own. Okay, so that's why cloud computing is, is, is a trend. There, once you start to use cloud computing, you realize that there's almost no way for you to go back to the, to the traditional um, you know, uh, hosting your own server. All right, not to mention that this thing is super cheap, All right, at least in the beginning. All right, so there are so many good things about cloud computing. I will spend one lecture to just talk about the ideas behind cloud computing, why this is such a good deal, um, uh, big deal to, for, for the tech industry. And then that's why Amazon is so successful of running AWS. If you look at their revenue report, uh, AWS has been growing every single year their, um, the, gener the revenue they generate from AWS is already taking a big part of the whole, for the whole AWS, uh, Amazon company itself. All right, so it's a very, very successful business. All right, so that's how you create a server. Okay, this is the first step. On Thursday, I'm gonna show you how we're gonna run our um, application on the server and anything else you need to know about server. For now, make sure your server is up and running. You can have your account set up, uh, AWS, of course, everyone can try to do this on your own. Uh, you don't have to stick with one account. Everyone can just try your own account and just play around with the whole thing. But just be careful about which region are you using, which type of server are you using. All right. Okay, so any questions? Yeah, Jimmy, so I, as I mentioned, you can use Firebase to hosting. There is a hosting ser service. I just highly recommend AWS because you, it's it's a very popular thing in the industry. It's almost like, okay, so everyone is using React. Okay, you got to React on a resume, it looks good. But then if you still say, oh, you know, I want to use this new thing called coffee. I know there's a web thing called coffee, something called coffee, right? Uh, of course, it works for the same thing, but you know, why don't we capture the trend? Firebase is different. Firebase is a mostly for, uh, it's, it's mostly kind of a service provider. They, they specifically work for the mobile application, some other application, then they later on add this hosting service. Uh, the goal is to simplify the, the application development, the mobile development, not as AWS. AWS is a infrastructure as a service. So you, you get every, all the details here. Beside EC2 is only one service. Jimmy. So they have hundreds of other services you can do in AWS. That's why. Okay. So I, I that's my recommendation. It's it's going to be good for your um, for your for your resume and career. 